Hi everybody, Scott Hards here along with Brian Caney. And we've got a special newsflash edition of Hobbywire for oh, you today. Yeah, yeah now, we do. If you're watching this video, of course, we gave it away in the title, so you already know what we're going to talk about. And here it is. Yesterday, we got this box uh, in the mail from the good people at the Fine Molds Corporation out there in Aichi Prefecture. Uh, and uh, they have sent us test shots of their almost ready to be released, about uh, three weeks away as we speak right. here, uh, almost ready to be released F4 Phantom EJ, and also and the EJ Kai. Kai. Uh, Which is the modified Kai version. Kai modified, yeah. Yeah. Uh, EJ, EJ Kai. Um, where to begin? Wow. Uh, we're excited to see this. So uh, we're just going to start pulling out parts here uh, and take a quick look. Now these uh, are parts for which one? Uh, this they, is, I believe, the... Named in the bags? This would oh, we be... we got parts floating around in here. This too. is the EJ, the regular EJ. Okay. Because this is the Kai here. Uh, so let's just kind of pull some of these parts out here and start taking a look. Which is good because the EJ came before the Kai. They got kai on their way, so that's why they're... Right, Kai means modified. modified. Or this is the okay. unmodified one. So, any uh, initial impressions here, Brian? Wow, very sharp. Very dainty panel lines. You know, uh, pretty much any modern tooling of an aircraft is going to have uh, nicely engraved panel lines, but these are, these are very nice. Sometimes it can be kind of out of scale, particularly uh -huh. in 72nd scale. Overstated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So in the smaller scales, 144th, 172, you can have like these trench side, which if it was a real thing, right. we'd have panel lines six inches wide, but these are fantastic. So yeah, uh, now fortunately today, we're not going to just be limited to showing off uh, beautiful photographs of parts, which you're probably taking a look at as you listen to us here. But I am uh, pleased to announce that yesterday I spoke with Mr. Suzuki himself, oh, uh, Suzuki Kunihiro, the uh, president of Fine Molds, who uh, I've been friends slash acquaintances with for, geez, over 20 years, more like He's 25 years. He's a great guy. Years. Wonderful to talk to. Yeah, great guy. Is super enthusiastic about everything he makes. Everything that they release, he says they choose them because he wants to build it right, himself, right. too. So this year uh, in Japan, which is still flying the F-4, uh, they're going to finally retire them. And that's one of the reasons that they chose to do the F-4. Uh, so I'm relaying the, the exciting stuff that Suzuki-san told me yesterday. But Sweet. Um, they had thought, you know, back then the F-4 was something they'd thought about. And they had done the F-14. Right, right. Yeah. So they have a beautiful 172nd scale kit of the F-14. Uh, they had thought about the F-4, but then he was thinking, oh, man, and every model company on the planet has an F-4 uh, in just about every scale there is. Uh, recently, even Airfix came out with a nice kit, which he also owns and has Phantoms, looked at. Yeah. yeah. So he's thinking, do we really need to do an F-4? And then they started thinking about it. One of their staff really wanted to go for it because, like I said, this year, Japan's self-defense forces are going to retire the Phantom right. uh, once and for all, sadly. Uh, I actually see them fly over my yeah, house. They fly, yeah, they fly over yeah. Sano all the time, too. Yeah. Yeah. Shake, shake the windows, even though they're pretty high up. But he thought they had something to offer. But. Uh, so, um, now I was assuming... Uh, when I heard that they were going to do a kit like this, that of course they're going to go, you know, all the stops are taken off and mega super detail, everything moves. You know, if you pull the landing gear lever in the cockpit, the gear actually go up or something. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, I'm exaggerating, of course, but that's kind of been the trend with a lot of model companies these days is, is kind of hyper overdue. detail. Yeah, right, right. Uh, and... Suzuki-san, when they sat down and they talked about what they wanted to do, of course they're all talking about, oh, we got to have all the control surfaces movable, we got to have the air brakes, you know, movable, we got to have canopies up and down, and we got to have all this stuff. And then at some point in the conversation, he says they decided not to do any of that. Hmm. And here's their thinking. First of all, they wanted the kit to be, uh, of course, super, super detailed. Right. Detail is not something you're going to compromise on. But they thought about kits where you have all these movable surfaces and gimmicky things that you can do with them. Mm -hmm. And one thing that he knows about all those sorts of kits is they tend to be very fragile. Yes. So like a Phantom kit, for example, uh, let's see if we can, we can find them here. I think is this, these are probably the horizontal stabilizers here, right? Yep. yep. If I can... Yeah, this is the, the runner with the horizontal stabilizers. I'm pretty sure those are the horizontal those stabilizers. Are the Typically, the Phantom stuff. kits, these are going to be a pin so that mm. you can pivot them and the real put, them in, yeah, are, put them in different positions. Tail, right? But you can see here that these are definitely not a pin. It's a, it's a slot that yeah, goes into go in the side of the fuselage, right. which means that after assembly, it's not going to move. It's also not going to break, uh, being Suzuki-san's point. 
And won't be tricky to position. Right. Won't be tricky to position. It's not going to break off. It's going to be sturdy. Right. So he said one of the things that they really wanted to do was make a kit that's going to be sturdy, even though it's super detailed at mm. one seventy second scale. Right. So he said that the uh, landing gear uh, bits, they've got really, really secure uh, ways of mounting them into the, uh, mm. the aircraft. So those aren't going to be easily breakable. Uh, they've really, he says, stressed making it so that all of the little bits are going to be relatively durable for right. a kit of this scale. Right. Uh, they've also broken down the parts, and this is one thing I'm, I'm very interested to check out when I actually build one of these, and I will. Uh, they have actually designed this, in his words, oh. to be an aircraft kit you can build like a tank. Oh. And by that he means no masking. No masking. Whoa. And if you actually take a look here, Brian, you'll no see masking. what they've done. Here's the, the main fuselage part, right? Right. Now you'll notice this whole chunk ah, is missing. Yes. and It's, it's missing. And, and here's, this stuff is like here's metal. the rest of it. Yes. This is, if you know your phantoms, have I got it backwards? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Something like this. If you know your phantom, this part of the aircraft is in natural metal. Right, right. Around the, the burner. The By the burners, yeah. yeah. Which means, of course, you're going to have to mask back there. Oh. But Suzuki-san wants to be able to right wants you to be able to build this kit without having to do any masking. So you can make these separately. Now he was also of. quick to admit to me uh, defeat on that goal because he says <laughs> on the horizontal stabilizers there's one little part you're going to have to mask. Ah. He said there's one part of the horizontal stabilizer you have to mask, but other than that, he says you can build this kit as sub-assemblies, right. paint them, and then put them Assembly. all together uh, in the final aircraft configuration oh, wow. without having to do a lot of crazy masking and stuff. Right. And I would say um, being a fine mold product, you're not going to have to worry about any squeegee fit problems. No. Paint it, put it together, it's going to fit perfectly. Yeah. You're not going to have gaps or anything. He also stressed they've done their best to design the kit so that the seams are natural, you know, uh, oh. seam areas on the aircraft. There you go. So you're not going to have to worry about, you know, having glue seams that you're going to have to, you know, buff right. out and, and stuff like that later. That's good. Uh, so he's really designed this kit from the viewpoint of the modeler who has to build it. Right. Now, his other main uh, goal here was to get to build a kit or design a kit that can be built relatively quickly for a detailed aircraft kit. Mm. And he believes that a experienced modeler should be able to build this kit in just 20 hours. Wow. Like painted, finished, decaled, painted, on finished, the shelf? Painted, everything done, Box 20 open, hours. on the shelf, 20 hours. 20 hours. That's yeah. not bad. Uh, that's, that's his claim, and he's already right. built some, uh, and mm -hmm. we're going to see some beautiful photos probably here, uh, of the completed examples. But he claims you can do it in 20 hours. Now, if he, of course, he's a super he's, experienced he modeler. He is a good modeler, yes. But why does he want, why was his idea here for making it simple to build uh, instead of crazy levels of, of parts and detail and gimmicks uh, and durable and everything? And his philosophy on this kit, uh, as he told me, was that the Phantom, of course, was in service in dozens of air forces around the world. There's hundreds of different marking schemes and yes. variations of the airplane. A lot airplane. of variations. So, and there's a lot of people who are really passionate fans of the Phantom. Phantom fans. So you may want to have not just one, but two or three or four, a collection of phantoms on your shelf. He says, if we make one kit that's going to take 50 or 60 hours to finish properly, everybody's just going to say, okay, yeah. that's enough. I'm done not gonna have all the with phantoms building phantoms. Yeah, yeah, they're not going to have the, uh, you know, the, the willpower the to want to do another one. Uh, but he believes that this kit will lend itself very well to collection building. Makes sense. So, so that's a very sense. also another right. very interesting design philosophy to me, and I look uh, look forward to uh, to getting to experience it firsthand right. uh, when I try to put this thing together myself. Unfortunately, no instructions yet, so I'm not mm. gonna I'm not gonna try to build it without uh, without some instructions. But, uh, but well, yeah. just looking at the parts here, you know, it's got the the intake trunks seem to be right. there, leading into the engine faces, which we also have the the, the front of the the what a J seventy right, nine, right. I guess. Yep. Have. And there, so that's cool. The this is the uh, what the splitters for the yeah. You got all this. This is gonna go like this, I guess, at some point. Mm -hmm. And then the forward fuselage is a whole different subassembly. So whole different subassembly here, yeah. So of course the reasons for this are obvious. It's for variations. those variations that they right, hope to right. do. Now they've started out because this is Phantom Year here in Japan uh, with releasing two Japanese versions of right. the aircraft. Right. So them. I asked Top him. Them. The brain dead obvious question: Are we going to be getting a U.S. version? Uh, his Before response change? was, "Duh." Um, <laughs> so yeah, respect, yeah. Um, obviously, we'll at some point be getting uh, U.S. versions and possibly other Navy, countries' Air versions yeah, 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 uh, yeah. of this plane as well. 
so yeah, hopefully there will be lots of different versions, uh, lots of different you know marking schemes that uh, people will maybe come out with decals for. Right. Uh, and also fine modes themselves, I should mention. We don't have samples of this, but they're also releasing an armament set mm, uh, right, for it. Right. Uh, which will have Japanese, whatnot. the Japanese domestic uh, missiles as well, right? right. Uh, will be included. Uh, so yeah, this is a very, very exciting release uh, that is coming probably in three weeks to a month. Right. Now, now Scott's already seen this. This is my first time checking this out, so I'm, I'm getting a little, uh, little quiet here as I look in there. <laughs> Carry on, sir. Yeah, we've got the there's some drop tanks. Obviously, it does yep. come with drop tanks, drop tanks. Uh, but there's no armaments uh, in the main. That looks like itself. a belly tank. This just looks like the the spine for the. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Good engineering. So yeah, but in particular, as a, a busy guy who also has a closet full of other stuff I want to build, you know, oh, spending all, sixty hours do. on a one seventy two Phantom <laughs> yeah. uh, is is not something I want to put on my uh, uh, my schedule. Uh, and as you again, as you can see, some of these parts, you know, like the nose cone, all this stuff is broken down by the areas where there's going to be separate colors. So. Oh, so I see what this is. I thought that this is this actually will be sandwiched to make a different type of. Uh, Vertical stabilizer. Oh, I'm sorry. We were talking about vertical stabilizers early, and the, mm. the part looks funky, but yeah, I guess it's going to be sandwiched. Between other parts other to parts. make the, the, the finished version? Yeah, oh, like here. It's going to go in like this. Ah, oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, boy. So that's some very clever engineering yeah. so that they can represent the changes at yeah, the top exactly. of the yeah. fin without having to retool the whole fin. Yeah, that's one of the very noticeable things between the EJ and the EJ Kai is it's got different bumps and lumps and things on, the, on the wing tips and like yeah, that. Yeah, wing yeah. tips and uh, the stable uh, wing tips and the vertical stabilizer. So that's sweet. Very sweet. These must be wing so tips. So maybe you could maybe even you could fit this into your schedule. Uh, perhaps. Per mayhaps. Here's the here's the clear parts. Uh, oh. it looks like maybe we do yeah. have a choice between open and closed. That's a good we've uh, got, uh, good choice there. We've got the uh, obviously the front glazing here, but then we have a, a one-piece uh, closed assembly, and then the two rear ones, the all three parts ah, separately for nice, uh, nice, pro nice. I would assume for yeah for making both of them open or yeah. one of them open because sometimes yeah. when there's only one person flying the aircraft, the front's open and the back is closed. Right. So we got uh, here's gun sight uh, and stuff in here. So yeah, yeah. It's lights. Well, everything yeah. looks really really sharp and detailed. So. Now, I've built uh, a few fine molds kits in, in my day, most of them uh, back when they were releasing their Star, Star Wars, Wars kits. Yeah, yeah, I've got a few Star I've Wars built kits. I've built the Y-Wing, the X-Wing, mm -hmm. the Darth Vader's TIE Fighter, and they all were an absolute dream to build, and particularly the Y-Wing, mm -hmm. uh, with all that detail all over. It just looks awesome. Right. Uh, I built so, some of the tanks, all the, all the armor and stuff. Is we built their armor, well. yeah. yeah. Right. Never had a fit problem or anything with a fine molds kit. So even if, super high quality. if fine molds isn't a brand that you're super familiar with, um, order with confidence. Yes. So you don't. It doesn't get much better than this. Or if so yeah, better. we wanted to show this kit off today uh, because, of course, we personally were really excited about uh, a major new release from Fine Molds coming out. Uh, but apparently, you guys are too, uh, because so far <laughs> at Hobby Link Japan, we have taken more orders for this kit already as a pre-order uh, than we have for any other aircraft kit this really? year. Yeah, awesome. So we're uh, obviously you. you guys are excited too. So we thought Thank it would you. be uh, be a great idea to show this off as early as we could. Super awesome. So wow, yeah, in another uh, three weeks to a month, we should have the actual product, and then hopefully I'll get to dive in and actually try to build one of these things. So, mm, I'm and, tempted as well. This Phantom is one of my favorite aircraft. It is probably it is my, an awesome looking plane. This is probably my favorite jet aircraft, jet yeah. fighter aircraft. I have other ones I like too, but yeah, Phantoms are awesome. Had the opportunity to go to Hequity Air Base a couple oh, years really? ago. Um, um, we might have a picture I can show, show you of me proudly standing in front of a Phantom. Okay. Uh, I got to see nine of them flying in formation overhead. Cool. That would be 18 J-79 spewing half-burned <laughs> jet fuel <laughs> as it thunders by. And it was a pretty awesome. They are awesome, pretty loud airplane. Pretty awesome. And then last year at uh, the Edomayer show, mm -hmm. uh, they had an RF EJ there. Uh, recon did, version. A recon version. And yeah. uh, they did some... They, when they get a crowd in front of them, they will ring them out. They will turn <laughs> sideways, and they, they just go nuts with them. So it's pretty awesome. So yeah, Phantom, uh, you can count me as a Phantom fan. That's Phantom. PH for both of those words, by the way. Of course. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah, you didn't even you have, have to say, say it. But, <laughs> yeah, Phantom is a supremely awesome aircraft, and it's great Alrighty. to see Suzuki-san throw his hat in the ring, so to speak, and come out with yeah. probably what's going to be, I would say, the de definitive version in 72nd. Unless you want to go nuts with all of the little gimmicks. You know, again, that's their, their design second. philosophy yeah, here. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. But uh, awesome. And, yeah, uh, I must say, and I'm sure there's a lot of modelers out there who've had the experience, you know, if you ever have to, like, move your collection or whatever, 
or and send it somewhere or take it, take it to a show. Or it's always like those little bits get broken off. The landing Shepherd, gear are gone. Yeah, the air yeah. brake is off. The, okay, you know, the stuff. flaps or whatever, the, yes. or the, the, or the elevators come off or whatever, right. especially on the kits with the gimmicks. So mm. I can definitely appreciate his philosophy about not having a bunch of gimmicks, uh, because even on the kits, maybe I'm, maybe it's just me, but even when I finish kits that have tons of gimmicks, it's like, I'm done. It's on the shelf. Maybe once I change something, change and position. then it's like yeah. it's the same way forever. So yeah, no, this is perfect, perfectly fine. All right, can't wait to dive in. So uh, tune in, so to speak, again in three to four weeks when the actual kit is out, uh, or better yet, go 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 on our site and push that buy now button yeah. right now. Oh, uh, and when you do buy one, I forgot to mention uh, one of the brands we oh, also yeah, carry that's right. is Vic Hobby. Vic Hobby colors are actually made here in Japan, but we distribute them. Mm -hmm. um, all aqueous, water-based paints, and right. they're doing a special set. Uh, they heard about the fine molds kit coming out, and they, said they had wanted to do some uh, uh, self-defense force colors, uh -huh. but they're like, okay, we got to get going on this. And it's going to be out about the same time as the kit is, sometime next month, probably. So we have a color set color for set. Phantoms. Yep, yep. 1600 yen, six colors. Actually, it's it's, for, it's kind of a generic one for g as you can see on here, but it is also specifically for the EJ and the EJ Kai and, okay. and the RF ones. So colors too, because you gotta paint these babies. Because you gotta paint. Alrighty, well it's all very good stuff. Hope you guys have enjoyed this special sneak preview of the upcoming Fine Molds Phantom Kits. And we've had a lot of fun bringing to you. We'll be back with a regular edition of Hobby Wire just as soon as we can. Yep. Take care. See ya.